always tape over it. Hello, my name is Kaya. I am a digital nomad, which means that I live in my van, travel around a lot, and work remotely. And one of the things people ask me all the time is, what do you do about internet? It's actually pretty easy to get internet. It's not really something that I struggle with, but like many of you, I'm off the grid for long periods of time. I spend my time in Yosemite National Park, near Indian Creek, Joshua Tree, places like this where there's not a lot of easily accessible Wi-Fi, or if there is Wi-Fi, it's not very good. I end up having to use my my cell service and I pair my phone to my computer and I do my work. This doesn't always work because if there's not really good service where I am then my internet's really slow. So the fine folks at WeBoost sent me this cell booster. Today I have RV cellular signal booster up to 32 times better cellular coverage. This little thingy is supposedly going to make my cellular data even stronger, which is great. It basically boosts your cellular data up to 32 times. So inside this box is a drive 4GX booster, an outside antenna kit, an inside antenna and cable, and then they give you a little diagram of where it's supposed to go. The outside antenna sits outside the van somewhere, goes to the booster, and the booster sits inside the van, and then it goes to the inside antenna. Boosts signal five to 10 feet. This works for me, this works for all my friends, and they don't have to connect to anything. They just like show up near my van and their cell service is instantly better. Oh my gosh, it's so self-explanatory. This is amazing. Okay, this is box step one. It says it on the box. This is like what Ikea should be. I really liked their uh, detailed instructions. Each box had like step one, step two, and then there were bags inside the box that said step one, ABC, step two, ABC. Ooh, I'm totally gonna cut myself. Oh, I didn't. Okay, good. Nubbin with screws, okay. Step one, you gotta mount all of the things. In order to get this little piece onto here, you have to unscrew those two screws, loosen them, thread it through these two holes, that hole here and that hole there, and then tighten them back down. For me, this was easy. I just kind of mounted the little white antenna, which is what they give you, onto one of the bars on my solar panel. Screwed on the back pieces right there. Washer, lock washer, nut. That's kind of what it looks like. Um, it's really sturdy on here. Like I was like trying to scooch it off. There's, it's not moving at all. And then there's the booster. Someone should do this exact thing, but for a van build out. You just put a bunch of cardboard boxes with exact steps. So here's the booster. We boost drive, which I attached to the wall next to my passenger seat. Damn, so sexy. And then I mounted the inside antenna to the very center of my van. It's right above the camera right now. This is the cable and the inside antenna booster. This is gonna be the thing that will boost my signal. Step two, connect everything for a dry run. This is important. I wanted to make sure everything worked before I started drilling holes in my van, but I plugged in the antenna, which is on the outside. I have the antenna mounted on the roof. I have the cable coming in from outside, um, attached to the booster, which is right here. And then I have another cable running down to the little antenna on the inside. It's just plugged in directly to uh, my outlet right now. So it's on, the light is green, supposedly it's working. Step three, drill more holes in your van. They even send you a drill bit. That's amazing, wow. This is just kind of like what you do when you live in a van. Drilling holes in vans is terrifying. I hate doing it, but what I'm gonna end up doing is using this bit they included in the package, putting it, and drilling a hole through here, through the roof. I think I counted how many holes I've drilled into my van at one point, and I don't remember what it was, but it's definitely like close to 18. And I have to tell you, the first one is the hardest, but every time I do it, I'm like, well, is this the time? Is this the time I fuck up my van? And it might be, but it wasn't this time. Woo. Step four, seal everything and connect it to the power. This little rubber gasket and this little cap. And you put that in the hole, run the wire through, put the cap on, and then screw down the cap. So it's kind of like there's a rubber seal protecting the inside of your van. I also put a bunch of silicone around there as well, just because I didn't want to risk it and I don't want to have water running into my van. Since I've done this hole, I've been through three or four rainstorms and there's been no leaks, so I'm feeling pretty confident about it. So they ain't too pretty. 
but uh, drilled the pilot hole, put in the washer, put on the cap, which is this piece, and then I put in the three screws, and I just am backing everything up with silicone. I normally back everything up with marine adhesive sealant, but I wanted to give the silicone a try. Tub and tile, 100% waterproof. Well, just in, I'm not sure if this is gonna be strong enough, but we'll see. If it's not, I'm gonna come back up here with the um, adhesive sealant. Now, connect 110 volt wall plug to power and plug into booster and enjoy. There's two options to connect it to the power. They give you a little battery connector which will plug directly into like an AC outlet which is just a normal outlet that you see in your house. So they give you a DC outlet which you can wire directly into your system. Initially I was going to wire the WeBoost directly to my batteries so that it would always be running. However, I've realized that it would be another source of constant draw off my batteries and I don't think I'm going to do that. I actually like being able to plug my WeBoost in and then unplug it and not have cell service. And there it is, the final product. Boom. Boom. Running under the solar panel. I'm not going to trim that zip tie and the antenna. Does it actually work? I initially tried to do a couple of tests on my iPhone. I got this weird app. Nothing is plugged in right now. I don't have the WeBoost on. What I do have is this app. And I tried to like test some of the cell service and then turn the thing on and test it again. I did it a couple times with like good service, no service, low service. I just plugged in the WeBoost and I'm gonna do the test again and see if it changes. I think actually the cell booster tester that I got was bad because they gave me an error reading every time I did it. All right, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I have no service at all. Now I have I have 1X, 1X Verizon. Doesn't really seem like anything's happening. Oh, error. All right, last time I now have 3G. There it is, 3G Verizon, and I'm gonna plug in the Wii Boost. My signal has gone up. I now have full bars of 3G. You can see. Full bars. 3G. Yeah, I'm gonna say that that app doesn't work because it keeps crashing. So I haven't actually been able to give you the exact decibels that are increasing, but I can give you my own anecdotal kind of experience. I've been using this thing for about six weeks now. This thing really does work. It's the difference between having a terrible time trying to get work done and being able to do my work in 10 minutes. As a digital nomad, that's really what it's all about for me. If you work for yourself and you work remotely and you spend a lot of time off the grid like I do, this is something I would highly recommend purchasing. Are there any downsides to this? It is a little bit pricey, about $500 for one of these so that's an investment but if you are like me you can write that off as a business expense and it's a one-time cost and finally my one critique for this product which is admittedly stupid it makes my van look kind of dorky I feel like my van looked kind of cool with the solar panels and the fan vent on top and now she's got this like nerdy little white thing out of her head that's a dumb critique and I apologize but I do feel a little bit nerdy having it so that's everything if you have any questions you can let me know down in the comments. You can find me on Instagram at One Chick Travels. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash One Chick Travels. You can find me on Twitter at Kaya Says. I just launched a Patreon. So if you want to see some of the behind the scenes stuff, play the ukulele, I write blog posts. If you want to see all of that, you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash One Chick Travels. That's everything I have. If you have any questions, let me know. And if nothing else, I'll see you next time.